Hello everyone and welcome to my first Blender game video tutorial series part 2.5. In this part we are not going to make any progress on the game itself, however we will have some general talk that will help us with our designs. So today there is four things I want to talk about and they are the Blender Artist forums, the local versus global axis, the touch versus the collision sensors and two bugs that I let pass through part 2. But before I end, once it is done, I want to have a general talk about Python and Python scripts. But before I do that, I want to show you my splash screen so that you know that I'm using Blender 2.6 revision 41226. So the first thing I want to talk about is the Blender Artist forums. Now at this point of the series, or maybe even sooner, you might have come across some problems or questions you would have liked to discuss with other people. And note that there is a place just for that, that is called the Blender Artist Forum. And this forum is the official by Blender Foundation for people who are working with Blender. And what is cool about this is that if we you go there at blenderartist.org is that if you go there you can see that there is a category named Game Engine and in that category there is um, there is a thread that is called Game Engine Support and Discussion. Now if we go there you can ask your question to people by clicking on post a new thread or you can simply go in simple question answered got a question and post something here. So the community here is very cool and normally I would say that you should have your question answered in less than one day. Also, it is a great place to keep up with the news and what is going on in the Blender world. So I recommend you it. I recommend it to you. And this is all for it. So let us move to the second point that was uh, local access versus global access. You might have noticed that in our motion actuators, we have these else button here. And what are these telling us is that they tell Blender if you must use the local axis, like it is right now, or the global axis, like right this. And what is the local and global axis? Well, the global axis is the axis of the world. And this will never change once the game is started, which means that this will always be the z-axis, y-axis, and x-axis. However, the local axis of your object will change every time you rotate your object, which means that if I rotate my object right like this, the z-axis that was once here is now here, because it rotated as well as my object. And if you want to see what is the current axis of your object, you can click on this drop down menu here, the orientation drop down menu, and select local. And now you can see that no matter how I rotate my object, the local axis always remembers its orientation. And for our game currently, it doesn't really matter because our character is not rotating, so that the world axis and local axis is the same. But if you're going for a more open world, like Legend of Zelda for example, you will want to, uh, to use the local axis, so that your character is always moving forward, no matter where, no matter where he looks. So that's it for the global and local axis. The, let's move on to the next point, that was the Collision versus touch sensors. Now you might remember that in our last tutorial we have used a collision sensor. And if you have poked around you might have noticed that there is also a touch sensor. And at first it seems that the touch, the touch sensor asks for material and that the collision asks for a property. But we know that if we click on this button it will ask for material too. So it little it let us with a question that is, where is there a touch sensor? And the answer is, I don't know. 
I have made my test, I have asked the people on the forums, and it seems that the touch sensor do the same thing as the collision, but has less options. So I really don't know why it is there, but if you are confused, here it is. So that's all for this point, I just wanted to tell you that quick, because it confused me for a while. And this brings us to the next point, that was the first bug I let pass through the last part. And I'll show you that bug quickly by starting the game engine and you can see that if I go near the edge and I start jumping oops, I can jump indefinitely and this is because as my character is touching the edge it is also touching the edge of our jump plane so to fix that I'll just go in edit mode then I'll quickly select edge and I'll grab this edge and move them a little bit to the left grab this edge move them a little bit to the right. So now our character won't be able to touch them when he will be touching the corner. And this might be a little too far, like this. So that's fixed. The last point is the second jump that I let the second problem that I let pass through the last part, and it is that we have a jump problem. Hell yeah, our jump is still not complete. So the problem is that if we are jumping at the end, you can see that our character isn't jumping at all. And if we are jumping at the start, or double jumping at the start, our character is going too high and now have access to areas we don't want it to. And the reason for that is that the way our setup is right now, we have uh, we are adding 5 of speed of speed in the z-axis. So when our character is falling, let us say at a speed of minus 5, and we are pressing the spacebar, it will make the speed equal to zero, which won't result in our character jumping again, which will result in our character stop falling for a moment. And if our character is jumping, so let us say at a speed of 5, and we press spacebar, we made it go at a speed of 10, which is too high and will let in the uh, access some areas we don't want to. So what we have to do is that instead of adding 5 to the z-speed, we have to set the z-speed equal to 5. However, let me move to this layer. However, we cannot use the set value, the set option of the linear velocity, for reasons you already know. So what we have to do is to use servo control once again. And I could change this motion actuator However, what I'll do, I'll add another one. Just give me a second. Here it is. I'll add another one so that this one will control our double jump and this one will control our simple jump. So that if we want to customize these two later, we will be able to. So I'll call it double jump. May change it to servo control. Change the Z target to 5. I'll select the X limit so that Blender won't be able to affect the X axis. And I'll let the Z unchecked so that Blender is uh, allowed to use any value he wants in order to make our character go at a speed of 5. Then I'll collapse it, move it up a bit, just to keep things organized. I'll connect it to the same controller as our spacebar sensor. And I'll Un, uh, unlink this one. And by the way, I don't think I have explained this, but the shortcut to unlink is Control left click, as you can see right here. And I don't know why my Control Z brings me back to the first layer, first state. Anyway, so now everything should work fine. And oops. And if we try, we can see that it is not. It doesn't work at all. And the reason for that is that our motion, our servo control logic brick, by default is set to give you this nice acceleration and deceleration that you give Blender a limit or not. However, we can easily fix that by playing with, uh, with this integral coefficient slider. And if I let my mouse over, the tooltip tells us that low value for slow response, high value for fast response. So if I double this, I should get a faster response. In fact, I should have an instant response. However, um, 
I have noticed that if I go over the value of 1, Blender will kind of overdo it and use a higher value than we need, which will result in our character jumping higher than we want. Also, you might have noticed that when I change the integral coefficient, the proportional coefficient change as well. And this is because if we read the tooltip, it says typical value is 60x integral coefficient for 60 time. So it adjusts itself automatically. Last is this derivative coefficient drop down menu, uh, not drop down a slider. And what is funny is that it says not required. High value can cause instability. So I really don't know why it is there because it seems it can only cause instability, but we'll leave it as default to prevent problems. And now, if we try it, it works just fine. And we're not able to go there, and we have the same double jump that we are failing, falling, or going up, or at the top of our speed. So that's all. Now our jump is finally complete and perfect. However, I, would I wanted to tell you that what we did, we did just now, using a servo control for our double jump, is a bit overdoing it, because servo control is a logic break that will make a lot of calculations, because it will check all the speed in the three axes, then check the, the target speed, and check the limits, and check the integral coefficient, proportional coefficient, mix all that, make a big calculation, and determine what force it must give. And that is a lot of calculations for something that is very, very simple, because when we look at it, the only thing we want to do is to take our z-speed and make it equal to 5. That is one operation, and the servo control will make many, many more. So the correct way to do it, the best way we should have to do it, is by using Python script. However, for this series, I take into consideration that you have not tried Python uh, Python yet, and that you have no experience with it, with it, so that showing you a Python script right now will only have confused you. And I just wanted to tell you this so that you keep in mind that even if all we do is working, it might not be the best way to do it, and that Python is a great tool to have in your toolbox. Now, also. Uh, at first, this series wasn't supposed to have any Python tutorial in it, but I am taking into consideration to make some, and I wanted to have your feedback on this. I would like to know if you are interested in learning Python, and if you'd like me to do some tutorials on it. So please leave a comment in the comment section, or contact me on my DeviantArt or Blender Artist page, web page. And that will be all for this tutorial. So, we'll, what we've learned today, we've learned about Blender Artist, we've learned about local versus global, uh, the touch versus the collision, and we have fixed two problems we had uh, left in our previous tutorial. So, I hope you have enjoyed this video and that you have learned something from it. I wish you a great day, and I'll see you in part two, uh, part three. See ya!